Welcome to the world of Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House. This 1948 movie promises a roller coaster of emotions funny, shocking, and even a bit sad. Keep your eyes peeled because there are plenty of surprises waiting for you. Starring some of Hollywood's classic actors, it's hard not to have a favorite. The characters bring life to the screen with their charm and wit, leaving lasting impressions on audiences worldwide. Have you ever watched a movie that left you thinking about a particular scene or moment long after it ended? Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House has those unforgettable moments that linger in your mind, making you ponder and smile. Now, we're curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic film? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share your thoughts and let's keep the conversation going. So, buckle up and get ready for a journey filled with laughter, surprises, and a touch of nostalgia. You won't want to miss a single moment of Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. In 1948, a film captured the essence of the American dream like no other. It followed the journey of a couple, Jim and Muriel Blandings, as they set out to build their dream home in the countryside. This film wasn't just about construction. It was a reflection of post-war aspirations, the desire for stability, and the pursuit of happiness. As Jim and Muriel navigate the challenges of building their home, audiences were drawn into their world empathizing with their struggles and celebrating their triumphs. Set against the backdrop of the 1940s, the film encapsulated the hopes and dreams of a generation striving for a better life. Its significance lies not only in its portrayal of the American dream, but also in its timeless appeal, resonating with audiences across generations. Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House remains a classic, reminding us that the pursuit of our dreams is a journey worth taking, no matter the obstacles we may face. During production, the House Un-American Activity Committee targeted the film industry. John Huston and William Wyler visited the set to enlist Myrna Loy's help in organizing a committee, which she did, donating $1,000 of her own money. The Lux Radio Theater aired a 60-minute radio adaptation of the movie on October 10, 1949, with Cary Grant reprising his role. Cary Grant missed out on roles that went to James Mason. He initially accepted, then declined the role of Norman Maine in A Star is Born due to semi-retirement. He turned down the role of Humbert Humbert in Lolita because he considered the film depraved. Warren Beatty wanted him to play Mr. Jordan in Heaven Can Wait, but he declined due to retirement. After Grant's death, his widow revealed that Garland's drug addiction led him to drop out of the film. Located in Malibu, California, the house featured in the film still stands today at coordinates 34 degrees 541 and 118 degrees 4243 W on the old 20th Century Fox Ranch. As a promotional tactic, the studio constructed 73 replicas of the Blanding's house across the country. These replicas were open for house tours, with proceeds donated to charity, and some were raffled off. This innovative stunt contributed to the movie's success at the box office. Despite his reputation for struggling with accents, Cary Grant starred in the film, though his previous attempts at Cockney accents were met with ridicule in the United Kingdom. Nonetheless, the movie's popularity soared, marking it as a significant achievement in Grant's career. Nestor Pava, who played a role in the 1948 film, had an interesting connection to Howard Hughes. His wife, Maxine, once served as Hughes' secretary, and they tied the knot in 1941, welcoming two children into their family. Melvin Douglas, another actor in the movie, was known for his political activism. In the 1940s, he, along with Edward G. Robinson, bid for Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fedora at a Hollywood auction benefiting the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Douglas faced accusations of communist ties during the McCarthy Red Scare era, a period marked by far right-wing Republicans. His wife, Helen Gehag and Douglas, entered politics and faced defeat in her 1950 U.S. Senate bid against Richard Nixon. Later, she was appointed treasurer of the United States by President John F. Kennedy. The protagonist, Mr. Blandings, portrayed a man earning $15,000 annually in the film. Adjusted for inflation, this would amount to approximately $185,000 in 2022. Originally set at $10,000 by the screenwriters, post-war inflation prompted an increase before filming commenced. These behind-the-scenes stories provide context to the lives of those involved in the film, adding layers to the narrative. It's intriguing how the personal lives of the cast intersect with political and economic context of their time. In the movie, Cary Grant found himself entangled in a personal drama off-screen. He harbored feelings for Sophia Loren, despite her commitment to Carlo Pani. This unrequited love caused tension during the filming of Houseboat. Charles Middleton, known for his role, had a familial connection to history as his father fought in the American Civil War as captain of Co. 
H of the 39th Georgia Infantry. Nestor Peva, another actor in the film, had humble beginnings as the 10th child of Portuguese immigrants who owned a grocery store in Fresno. Despite tragedy striking half of his siblings in infancy, Nestor went on to pursue a career in acting, contributing to the success of the movie. In a memorable moment, a father enters his daughter's room and notices a sports pennant with the emblem of Take, a nod to a college from another famous movie. The actor in the film, whose daughter later had a son named Carrie Benjamin Grant, plays a big role. The story mixes family ties and nods to other movies, creating a rich narrative. It's interesting to see how different stories connect, making a bigger picture. The actor's performance isn't just acting, it's part of a bigger story that spans generations. Throughout the movie, there are subtle hints and references like the sports pennant that add depth. These details give a sense of history and nostalgia to the film. Sadly, one of the cast members, Sharon Moffat, passed away in 2021, leaving behind a memorable role. Moffat and the rest of the cast leave a mark on the movie, showing how storytelling can endure. Looking back, it's impressive to see how everything in the film fits together the sets, the actors, and the little nods to other stories. Each part plays a role in making the movie special. As the movie ends, the impact of Mr. Blanding's builds his dream house lives on, showing the power of storytelling. Exploring the legacy of a timeless classic, it's fascinating to see how it has inspired multiple retellings over the years. Notably, the original release from 1948 has seen various interpretations with Hollywood and Sweden both taking their own spins on the story. In 1986, a Hollywood adaptation titled The Money Pit Hit Screens featuring prominent actors like Tom Hanks and Shelley Long. Later, Sweden offered its own rendition titled Drum Kicking in 1993, showcasing the talents of Björn Skiss and Suzanne Reuter. Hollywood revisited the narrative once more with Are We Done Yet? In 2007, starring Ice Cube and Nia Long, a significant figure in the film, Cary Grant experienced a notable family milestone as he welcomed his granddaughter, Davy and Adele Grant, into the world on November 23, 2011. The movie often draws comparisons to another cinematic gem, George Washington Slept Here, as both delve into similar themes and scenarios. In summary, this cinematic gem has left a lasting impact, transcending generations and inspiring multiple retellings across different cultures. Its narrative echoes through the Grant family, adding depth to its enduring legacy. Myrna Loy, known as Myrna Williams in her early career, showcased her talent at a young age, debuting at 12 with a choreographed dance based on the Blue Bird at Helena's Old Marlowe Theater. Cary Grant reprised his role as Jim Blandings for a radio program titled Mr and Mrs. Ferrer Blandings in 1951, where his wife at the time, Betsy Drake, portrayed Muriel Blandings alongside Gail Gordon as Bill Cole. The movie was adapted into a 30-minute radio show by Screen Directors Playhouse on June 9, 1950, with Cary Grant again taking on his film role. 